Okay, this one is about the arc fault interrupter. Now, back in the 70s, we had the ground fault interrupter. That came in so that if there was a fault in the ground and the power didn't pass, all the power didn't pass from hot through to neutral, that if there was a leak to ground somewhere, it'd kick it off. And they worked fine. Uh, there was a few problems when they first came out, but they worked okay. Now what we have is the arc fault interrupter. So what is it supposed to do? It is supposed to detect if there's a bad connection in the circuit that it's protecting. Now that simply means that it's making contact and breaking contact and when it's doing that it can overheat cords and uh, possibly start a fire. So that was the idea behind these things. And the question was, how do you determine if an arc fault exists? When they first came out, there were problems with them. I put a few of them in and had to replace them all. They seem to have settled down pretty much. And, uh, and they're working okay now. Well, let's take a look at this thing when it's broken apart. Now, it's not going to tell you a whole lot more than with it together. But let's take a look. Okay, this is uh, taken in half, and this is a mechanical part. This is the part that kicks it off uh, if there's an overload. That's pretty much in here. The part we're interested in is this here. Now, this electronics is there to find the uh, arc fault, to determine an arc fault. This right here is actually an electromagnet that when placed together pulls on this part right here and kicks this thing off. So if there's a condition, and in this case this is also a ground fault interrupter, it does both, either arc or ground fault, this is going to energize and it's going to pull this over which is going to trip this thing off just like it tripped if it was uh, an overload. So. What makes this work? Well, we got lots of cool little electronical doohickeys in there that don't really tell us a whole heck of a lot by looking at them. I see an MOV right there. That's probably to protect the electronics themselves. But other than that, there's not much there. So I'm going to kind of give you an illustration. What would make the arc fault interrupter kick off? Now on this, this is just a little chart of an AC sine wave. Okay, 120 positive, 120 negative, 60 cycles per second. That is normally what you're going to see in the power that you'd find in a standard 120 volt outlet. Okay, how does it how do you determine if there's an arc in this thing any place? Well, what happens when an arc is produced, it makes and breaks contact meaning the two parts that are uh, causing the problem, a broken wire or something like that, those parts are making and breaking contact a number of times, and they make the sine wave a little different than this. Instead of these smooth sine waves like that, you're going to have little pieces like this. You're going to have things like that that are going to interrupt that sine wave. Now when you get that, that means there's an arc. It's making and breaking contact. So, because remember, uh, AC goes from 0 volts to 120 to 0 to 120, positive and negative. It's at a 0 point, so it's off for 120 times during the seconds, uh, 120 times a second. So, uh, it's making and breaking. Well, this thing is making and breaking too, but it's making and breaking in an odd sine wave. When you get that odd sine wave, that's when this thing is supposed to catch it. Now, they had problems with them when they first come out. Uh, there were a fair number of problems with them, but they did get it ironed out, so now they generally will kick off only if there's an arc. 
So it's just these different things. That's what the electronics in this thing is made to detect, is all these different uh, arcs in there. And that really is all an arc fault is. Okay, to illustrate what an arc looks like, most of you should already know that, but for those that don't, I'm going to go ahead and run a circuit here with these jumpers and a little piece of uh, carbon, which is just a uh, uh, motor brush. And you can see what an arc looks like. Now this is a very tiny arc. Yes, this is 12 volts. Uh, I'm not using 120 volts here. No electricians were murdered for this uh, video. So that's what an arc looks like for what it's worth. But you can see that little arc. And you can see how it could actually make and break contact a lot. So what would be a good candidate for an arc? Usually in an extension cord. Well, this old boy here would be a good... Uh, Good example of that. If there's a lot of flex back and forth here, this is where that wire is going to break in sight. And it usually breaks a few strands first, and then it breaks the rest of them later on. You could get uh, an arc in one of these wires, not across, but actually in the wire going into it. Uh, if it arcs across, it's liable to kick the breaker off on overload. This is not an overload, by the way. This is an arc fault. So a lot of cords like that, they're not terribly well made. There's no, uh, they're susceptible to uh, breakage right at the junction of the cord and the uh, plug. That's it on this one.